today as an advisor to your wonderful Elpro International School. As you may know, Indian food is our national dish. It's not fish and chips. And uh, I think that says a lot about your country, your people, and indeed our people. So our national dish is Indian food. We are welcoming and hospitable as a nation. And yes, sadly, we do have some idiots with pressure prejudice, but, but I'm really pleased to say not many. We have um, Polish as our second language. Polish. Isn't that amazing? Where a lot of Polish people have come from, obviously, Poland to work, and they work very hard in the United Kingdom. So, we're used to having people come to uh, work with us, and become part of our society. Now I'm going to talk very briefly about my city, which is London. The 2011 census recorded that 36.7% of London's population are foreign born. Just think about that. Over a third of the population of London weren't born in the United Kingdom making London the city with the largest immigrant population. That's more than New York, more than Sydney, in terms of absolute numbers. There are, of course, historic reasons for this, resulting in the Commonwealth with 53 countries and one third of the world's population, aided by India, of course, headed by Her Majesty the Queen, who, at 93 years old, is still doing an absolutely amazing job for all of us. You will, of course, be aware that the United Kingdom had a referendum in June 2016 where 72% of our population voted. That, for us, that's a very high number. And 52%, sadly, voted to leave the European Union. Nobody expected that result. We withdrew from the European Union formally last Friday, the 31st of January, and we now have intensive negotiations with the European Union to agree trade and relationship terms. They're going to be very tough. Our Prime Minister, Boris Johnson, is aiming to have this done and completed and agreed within one year, which is really ambitious, but I'm hoping that will work. It will certainly affect our trade with our friends in Europe, but this is more than about trade. It's about immigration, as one example. And I've explained that the United Kingdom has an admirable record on immigration. But do you know, there's a lot we can do. We can but our friends in Europe rely on us for defence because we are the largest contributor to the North Atlantic Treaty, that's NATO, which defends uh, member states in Europe. We uh, contribute 2.4% of our gross domestic product and we are a major producer of arms, whether that's good or bad. We have two new aircraft carriers and we're currently supplying frigates to the Australian Royal Navy. That's just one example. I thought it'd be helpful if I read a poem that I wrote when Brexit, when the Brexit vote had happened, and I was feeling quite depressed. But um, I'll read it to you so you can understand the feeling that was going on in the United Kingdom after Brexit was announced by Remainers. So it goes like this. Oh, how I wish Brexit had ceased to be, expired, gone to meet its maker, bereft of life, a sith for all the world to see. Abroad, I now introduce myself as I'm from the UK, the country that caused so much fuss, the one that was conned by a big red bus. 
350 million pounds a week, they said, for the National Health Service. No, I don't. No, actually, what I said that in London, one th over one third of the population was foreign born. We have in the United Kingdom one and a half million people of Indian ethnicity, um, which uh, get on very well with the indigenous population. Um, so I, I can't see any reason why that would change. In fact, quite the contrary, given we are in effect, divorcing but still remaining friends with our European <laughs> Union colleagues. I, I think the, the Commonwealth will become stronger as far as we are concerned. I know that the Secretary General of the Commonwealth, Baroness Patricia Scotland, is very keen to encourage trade between Commonwealth countries which actually saves money, it's economical. Because of the trade arrangements we have between the 53 countries, it's much easier for us together to trade together. So I can't see too much effect on immigration from the Indian subcontinent. But good for Higher education system. So I was wondering if Brexit has any direct effect on the education system of the uh, United Kingdom. Um, and let me explain why. A lot of um, students from the European Union come to the UK for education, for very good reason. We have um, some of the world's best universities, I'm very proud to say, including the one that my son Ben goes to, King's College. So if you, that's not to say in Holland, Germany, France, there are good universities, there certainly are. But we are in a, a, a very good situation when it comes to our universities. And we want and need um, foreign students to come to study in the United Kingdom. So I, it's difficult to say, assuming we can reach a sensible arrangement in the next year, which will allow students to come in without many restrictions and I know talking of visa restrictions I know there are some problems and irritations with students from India coming in to the United Kingdom which I very much disagree with I, th I think there are so many benefits if we have different nationalities coming into our education system it, it brings us and our students uh, a greater understanding of the world and the different cultures and I think that's very important. Sir, as you told you have been a very successful entrepreneur, so uh, how can we spread this, uh, what inspired you to uh, start up your own business and how can we spread up uh, in current situation of unemployment that we should start up our own business and work for us? Uh, okay, just so I make sure I've got the right question. What are the essential ingredients of starting your own business and being an entrepreneur? Yes, sir. Okay. How can you promote uh, other people to do that? How can you, I beg your pardon, promote? That uh, we should, uh, instead of seeking for a job uh, in present situation of unemployment, uh, we can start up our own business. Okay. Right. Starting up your own business. First of all, you have to have the passion and the idea. You have to look at your competition, the market, and decide what is special, what is different about your proposed business as compared to everyone else. What are your USPs, your unique selling propositions? That's absolutely vital that you know what you're offering has a has the demand in the market.
grade 7, 8, 9, as well as grade 11, who are going to be sharing their views on a lot of important global issues that are taking place in current times. Parts. First of all, life-saving drugs. Life-saving drugs are those medicines which we use when we face critical diseases which threaten our life. Second, have not become developed as of now. That these underdeveloped and developing countries have to pay a big price for these medicines. Due to this, countries cannot afford to pay subsidies as this will take a toll on their country's GDP. Third group, the winners today. So many congratulations. 